There you go. Well, I'm Michael James, and in uh, the summer of 1962, I had the wonderful opportunity to drive a 56 Triumph Thunderbird yeah. from Chicago to Mexico City. It took me four days, and um, I went to school in Mexico City, and uh, I had a camera. I think it was a Pentax. I shot about five or maybe six rolls of uh, Plus X and Tri X, 36 pictures in each roll. I printed a picture of Kennedy, and this this one over here. Uh, the, um, actually, just so I, in this sequence, Kennedy is with Lopez Mateos, the president of Mexico. This motorcycle has just clipped a guy who ran out from the crowd. You can see all the suits in the Cadillac looking back at the, that. And I literally cocked the camera and shot again when Kennedy and Mateos went by. And I call it JFK in Mexico, fading away, JFK in Mexico, 62. It was the year before he was killed. Uh, I gave the, the <clears throat> negatives to my son, who was working at a lab downtown. And he, uh, uh, he came, I said, print a picture of Kennedy. And look, I just wanted to have one, because I didn't have it anymore. And he came back and said, I think you have a show. And so I would come home at night with the prints uh, leave them for my wife Paige, who's here, uh, to take a peek at in the morning. It was pretty exciting. We had a show of about 56 pictures at the Heartland Cafe in 98. Um, I had it a few other places, Dittmer Gallery, and number, about three or four other smaller versions. I got a couple of great quotes from the, the great leftist writer, uh, John Ross, who passed away last year, and from Art Shea, who did a, the uh, Nelson Algren books, and uh, he went and saw this show when it was downtown at a, a gallery, and he gave me a lot of praise. Uh, so I was really honored that Lewis and the rest of the folks here asked me to put my stuff up. Um, I hope to work with these a lot more. I actually wrote a long piece that appeared in the Heartland Journal that goes with these, and I'm reworking it, and one of my sons is, uh, says he's putting it together in a book at his, in his art department at his company. So we'll see if I get to publish that. Uh, I have a lot of uh, pictures still to come from lots of different events, and I hope that Lewis and everyone will invite me back. You had taken them. You hadn't developed them until rather recently. I had developed them. The exhibit is called Mexico 62, and it's uh, a series of photos. Uh, actually, there's probably 60 up now uh, that I took in Mexico in the summer of 1962. And the way it came to be was I had developed these pictures with a guy named Sam Posse and Sear, who was a math teacher at Lake Forest College in the 60s. He lived in Evanston. I remember in the fall of 1962 going down to his house to a dark room. He was kind of an early hippie beatnik guy, chess player. He used to like to talk about how they'd show up at the Evanston tennis courts there, and not in their tennis stuff, but in really funky old clothes. He thought that was cool. And, you know, as a young kid, I don't know, wow. Anyhow, Sam developed his pictures. I was in the dark room. We printed, I think, the one of Kennedy that's called uh, Fading Away Now, JFK in Mexico 62, a couple of other pictures. And I had them in an, uh, basically a sculpture show I did at Lake Forest in 64. Uh, other than that, I didn't pay much attention to them. I had a, the one picture of Kennedy in the drawer, and I would look through my stuff, and I got a lot of stuff back there, a lot of archives and uh, things to unearth and unfold. But uh, last spring, I asked my son, David Libman, to make another print of the Kennedy photo and to enlarge the contact sheets, which we had. And David came back to me and he said, Dad, I think we have a show here. And um, that's how it started. We actually, uh, it was like mining gold and finding nuggets. I would, he'd be, he was working at Lab One and uh, every week or so I'd go down there and there'd be three or four or five more prints done. And, uh, you know, it was just like, you know, I said, where was that picture taken? And as I've been around them more and more, I've started to learn, remember what went on for me that summer and the events that happened. And, uh, you know, I started looking at maps again and trying to figure out the route I took on my motorcycle. This was basically, you know, it was a young guy's uh, early on adventure. Uh, riding from Illinois to Mexico City on his triumph motorcycle. Now, how did you happen to be in Mexico City in 1962? I don't know how that was. <laughs> I remember, I remember, uh, I mean, I had a social conscience, and I had an adventurous conscience, um, consciousness. I, uh, you know, I, uh, I liked the West. I liked the, 
you know, cowboy and Indian stuff, and I liked Mexican border stuff, Pancho Villa stuff, and I liked Mexico, and I liked, uh, I basically liked diversity, and I liked uh, people of other cultures, and I think I was becoming a Western Hemispherean. I mean, I was, I probably studied more at that time about Africa, but um, I, I had been to Mexico, uh, close to Mexico, I should say. I hadn't been to Mexico when I drove, uh, from Connecticut to California in the summer of 60 to work in a cannery. And I was uh, in El Central, California. And I remember uh, late one night uh, driving through there, uh, just being all kind of people, Mexicans and white people, some black people, some Asians running the joint. And it just was cool, you know, and that was, so I don't know where the interest came from or how it was, but I ended up in 62 uh, wanting to go to Mexico. And I applied to this Mexico City College which is mostly Americans. And a lot of them were kind of hip-oriented, beat. Well, there were serious Spanish students, too, you know, and Spanish students. There's all kind of people there, I guess. Okay, uh, now wait, let me just do... Three times. Yeah, this is really slow. Let me just do one so we get to five. She's not a photographer. <laughs> yeah, now were you both in Mexico together? Yeah. I was, I was not. I was in Mexico eight years before. Okay. Sixty. Oh. Sixty. On the boats going over to Cuba? Oh no, two years. Okay. I'm going to finish my breakfast and I'll see you. Great photographs. Yeah. Great photographs. Yeah. I want to hear a first hand explanation of these shots of the Kennedy. Well, that's just an amazing, an amazing confluence yeah. of documentary photography on the run yeah. and history intersecting yeah. at that very moment. It's incredible. That makes him like Forrest Gump. <laughs> <laughs> Please, not my favorite movie. <laughs> but the, the the one that the one that's so incredible is the, the guy delivering milk. I mean, that's like a combination of the most elegant kind of composition combined with that incredible moment of a person laboring to do something every day and bring the milk to somebody amidst this incredible. Pickup truck, uh, an old Chevy station wagon under a, a kind of a lean-to hut of a uh, garage, and uh, that's when I started. I just took pictures. I don't know. Every few, every once in a while, I started to take these pictures. Position. You don't see stuff like that all the time. This guy's a genius. He missed this calling. <laughs> oh, he's gonna love it. I love that. That is a great photo. It is, isn't it? That's really awesome. It just makes you feel so much for that God. Yeah. You know? Without sacrificing the sort of aesthetic integrity of the moment. You know what I'm saying? Right down the street, I agree with you. That's it for me. All right. <laughs> We've had your 15 seconds of fame. All right. <laughs> and I always was looking, I guess, for a little bit the wild side. And just let it take me where it took me. Really? I can't believe it. <laughs>